Fabiana, right. if, I, if I start with you, the outlook for China, clearly the market's bounced significantly in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. Is there still upside regardless of the trade outlook or does it rest heavily on the trade outlook? The trade outlook is key for what's going to happen to the market going forward. It is not the only reason why the market is bouncing back. Another reason is the increased inclusion of China in the uh, world indices, which clearly means that investors have to start taking notice of the country and increasing their exposure because most of investors at the moment are still underweight. Uh, but at the same time, if there is no trade agreement, we will have more pain both on the GDP side but also on the earnings side. And earnings are key for China in terms of uh, equities. You're in, yesterday we did see the market sell off. It came off the lows. But uh, a lot of people saying that was because all the positive news that we've had of late on the China-US trade deal progress was already priced in. What, what's your take on, on that particular point? Yes, I, would, I think that's right. I mean, it's <clears throat> a little bit of a sell the news going on. I mean, the news actually isn't there yet, but everyone wants to be the first one to sell the news. And, and the S&P rallied, you know, about 20 percent right back into what is considered resistance at 2,800. So if anyone's going to sell it anywhere, this would be the, the place. That doesn't mean that the rally is over, but it's probably going to stall out here. And, and so uh, I, I think it makes sense that the market takes a breather here. My, my view has been all along that uh, the, the trade tension is a long-term structural um, thing and that you know individual battles may or may not get resolved and it looks like this one will but that doesn't mean that the whole thing is over and that maybe down the road there'll be other flare-ups. So the key thing uh, for US equities is that earnings and, and do you think the, the turn towards bearish sort of outlook on, on US earnings is overdone? Yes, yeah, so I think there's, there's three things going on. Obviously, we had the 20% decline. We had the Fed pivot, um, and how long that pivot will last is unknown. Uh, we have a big reflation going on in China now. So, you know, there's all the trade talk, but China was slowing well before the, uh, any, any trade tensions, and now they're sort of starting to stimulate their economy, which they can do better now that the Fed is sort of out of the picture because of the, the tied currency. But <clears throat> I think most importantly right now is that the earn, earnings narrative is starting to improve. So the 2019 earnings estimate from the, the Wall Street uh, community was at 12 percent in terms of growth, uh, the expected growth rate. It fell to 5 percent and over the last three weeks it has held very steady. So my sense is that that narrative is starting to stabilize, that maybe we will get around mid single digits for 2019. And if we can do that after 22 percent in 2018, um, then that's a pretty smooth kind of landing, if you will, on the earnings front. Fa Fabiana, you think it's time, whether it's China or elsewhere, to, to look outside from U.S. equities, which yes. markets in particular? Um, China and Korea, the two markets who underperformed the rest of Asia the most in 2018, probably not for entirely the right reasons, probably too much was baked in in terms of negativity. So those are two markets that we like, particularly if there is a trade um, negotiation that uh, resolves in a positive way. And we also like Brazil. I think the new administration, the new uh, impetus on reforms, the new Minister of Finance is really starting in earnest with a lot of new initiatives. Uh, we like that. Obviously, in emerging markets, everything can happen, everything can change at the last minute, but so far, so good. You mentioned the, uh, the change in the uh, index weighting of China for mm -hmm. emerging markets. So suddenly investors who thought they were on market weight or even a little bit overweight find themselves. I mean, it's a mechanical effect, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but how far can that take the Chinese market? And at, at what other markets' expense, do you think? Look, um, China is about 15 percent of global GDP. It's now less than 4 percent of some of the major indices. So unless you think that the economy is going to shrink by 75 percent, there's clearly a big gap that needs to be filled there. Um, other indices, well, I actually think developed markets will see a shrinkage of their position in the indices because they're overrepresented from a GDP viewpoint. 15 percent GDP, 4 percent in indices. What, what would it be by market cap? Is it somewhere That's between market that? Cap. That's market cap. That's based. current market cap yeah. as opposed to, to the weighting, just the weighting mm -hmm. in the index. You, you're in. What's uh, your take on, on the dollar for the year ahead? You know, I think <clears throat> with, with the Fed potentially shifting uh, to a kind of an inflation uh, targeting regime or like a price level or an average inflation regime, something that's more dovish than what they are doing now in terms of that 2%, um, that, you know, all else being equal should be a negative for the dollar because it probably means lower real rates going forward structurally, not just cyclically. 
Uh, but the question is, you know, if it's weaker on the dollar against what currency? I mean, you know, the, the euro is no, no trip to Paris mm -hmm. either, right? So, um, so I'm not sure that there's a lot of downside for the, for the dollar, but um, I, I don't really see a lot of upside here. And it's interesting that gold is actually kind of stirring a little bit because that's the only currency you can buy that's not a pairs trade with another currency. Mm -hmm.